the Soundpiece Space have arrived and they are bringing strong performance to the budget headphone market. I'm here to give you a rundown of all of their features and performance. As always, I'll leave links to all the products mentioned in this video down in the video description. If there are any discount codes available, I'll leave those down there as well. So let's get into it. First up, let's start with their Bluetooth connectivity. So these are featuring Bluetooth 5.3 with SBC and AAC as their connection codecs. This makes them perfectly compatible with both Android and iOS devices in my own testing. There is also a 3.5 millimeter headphone port on the right ear cup for listening via the included aux cable in case you happen to run the battery all the way down or if you prefer using a 3.5 millimeter connection. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth range, I was able to get about 45 feet or 13.7 meters in my own testing. I was able to put three walls between the headphones and the phone that they were connected to before I started hearing any cutouts or dropouts. The Soundpeed Space also offer multi-point connectivity for up to two devices. I tested this by pairing them to a bunch of different devices, including my iPhone 15 Pro Max, my OnePlus Open, my Pixel 8 Pro, and my iPad Pro. Multi-point worked as expected. So now let's talk about lag or latency. So latency when you're watching videos is minimal on Android and iOS devices. So no problems watching your apps like YouTube, Netflix, TikTok, whatever it might be, no issues whatsoever. Now, when it comes to mobile gaming, actual mobile gaming is quite decent with these headphones. There is a low latency game mode option that does reduce latency to as low as 65 milliseconds. Now I played a few rounds of Call of Duty Mobile and the latency was still there, but it's not enough to be a distraction for a casual player like me. But if you are a competitive gamer and latency bothers you, then you probably want to run these uh, wired via the 3.5 millimeter aux cable for a lag free experience. Now, a really important question about any set of headphones or earbuds is going to be how is the comfort and the build quality? So right now, the Soundpeed Space are available in three colors. You can get them in nebula black in creamy beige or ceramic white. Now, the build quality on the Soundpeed Space is pretty much what I, I would expect from a set of headphones at this price range. We're talking about anything from 50 to 80 bucks. It's a lightweight plastic aluminum construction with an adjustable headband. Nothing right home about standard you know, budget headphone territory here. They are nearly as light as like the Sony XM5 coming in at just under 265 grams. When it comes to comfort, the Soundpiece Space haven't caused me any head or neck fatigue during long listening sessions. And the clamping force is minimal here. And that's basically how much pressure the, the headphones actually put on your head. But if these are too tight for you or you have a bigger head than mine, then here's how you can kind of loosen them up. So basically all you gotta do is find a box that's wider than your own head and then just park the headphones on there anytime you take them off. After a few days, they'll be stretched out and you'll be good to go. Now, overall comfort has been pretty good in my experience. Grip is actually su uh, surprisingly good on these headphones and they tend to stay put on my walks. However, they did slip a little bit during weightlifting. So I tend to sweat a lot during my workouts and they started to slip when I was doing those bent over rows. They kind of started tilting forward on my head. I was sweating quite a bit, so it could be partially my own fault, but I just wanted to throw that out there in case you plan on using these for workouts. Much like most other wireless headphones on the market, the ear pads on these are using that PU leather um, they're not very breathable, so they will get hot if you try to use these for sports or workouts. At least that's what it's been like in my own testing. So now let's talk about the controls. So the Soundpeed Space use very simple button controls. So on the right side, you've got a multi-function button that's gonna power them on and off. It also controls play pause, answer end phone calls, and access to your voice assistant. And then you've also got a volume rocker that doubles as track control with a long press in either direction. Then on the left ear cup, you've got a button for active noise cancellation, transparency, and normal. And overall, like I said, very simple controls. The buttons are very tactile, they're clicky, they're easy to locate, Okay, and they are very responsive when needed. You don't have any weird touch controls or anything like that going on with these headphones. So now let's jump over to the app support. So the Soundpeats app support is available on both Android and iOS devices. Now I'm not gonna be giving you a full walkthrough here. I'm just gonna give you the TLDR because everybody skips this section anyway. So when you open up the app, you get volume control, you get adaptive EQ. Eh, I'm a little on, 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 I'm not too sure about that one. You get some EQ presets, you get a customizable EQ, you get your ANC controls, you get a toggle for the gaming mode, and a toggle for the multi-point connectivity. Now, do you need to download this app to use the Soundpeed space? No, the headphones operate perfectly without the app, but if you want to make those EQ adjustments, then getting the app can definitely help. So now let's move over to the performance of the Soundpeats Space. And first up, let's start with the biggest claim that they have, and that is battery life. So Soundpeats is claiming up to 61 hours with noise cancellation turned on and 123 hours with noise cancellation turned off. Now these are bold claims for sure. In my own testing, I was able to get about 54 hours with noise cancellation turned on at 
85% volume using mixed media. So overall, excellent excellent battery numbers here. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the 123 hour claim with ANC off is completely true. Now these headphones also charge via USB-C and feature a fast charge option. 10 minutes worth of charging time can get you up to 12 hours worth of playback time. Now the Soundpeat Space also have an auto shutoff feature that activates after five minutes to save power if there's no active Bluetooth connection. So you don't have to worry about like taking them off and accidentally leaving them on and then you know you're, you come back to them and the batteries drain. You're not gonna have to worry about that. So now let's talk about the transparency mode. And basically that's the mode where you uh, you can activate the microphone so you can hear your surroundings. So transparency mode is actually surprisingly good for a set of headphones at this price point. Overall, it sounds less processed and more natural than I was expecting for something coming in under 80 bucks. Thankfully, I didn't notice any sound quality difference either when switching from normal to transparency mode. So overall, surprisingly good. Now, sadly, we don't get any sort of like wind noise reduction or any sort of modes like that. It's just a basic transparency mode. So now let's move over to the active noise cancellation. The Soundpeat Space claimed their ANC strain can reduce noise up to 35 decibels. So this isn't Bose or Sony levels of active noise cancellation strength. So don't go in expecting this. The Soundpeat Space are good at reducing steady, lower frequency sounds like engines, motors, air conditioners, refrigerators, fans, etc. But not very good at reducing higher frequency noises like people talking or babies crying. So this is what's going to be expected at this price point. If you need stronger noise cancellation performance than this, you will have to spend 150 or higher for options from Bose, Sony, Sennheiser, or Beats. Now, thankfully, I didn't experience any noticeable EQ shift in this mode either. So solid work by Soundpeats for that because Overall, music pretty much sounds the same to my ears when I'm going from noise cancellation to normal to transparency mode. So kudos to them. Overall, I'd say it performs as expected for this price point. Not the strongest in the field, but not the weakest either. So now let's move over to sound quality. The Soundpeat Space feature 40 millimeter dynamic drivers for crisp audio and deep bass impact. Now all of my sound testing was performed using both Apple Music Lossless on my iPhone and Koba's Hi Res on my Asus Zenfone 9, along with some locally stored FLAC and WAV files. Now out of the box, the tuning was, wasn't what I was expecting from Soundpeats to be completely honest. Lately, Soundpeats has been delivering some excellent tuning with emphasis on balance with a bit of bass, similar to what you get with the Soundpeats Engine 4 or say the Mini Pro HS. So I was expecting something similar to that. These came out of the box and they sounded a little darker than what I was expecting. By that, I mean, there wasn't as much treble clarity and not as much emphasis on mid range as what I was expecting. So I ended up creating my own custom EQ to bring out the clarity and the brightness that I personally prefer. I also tried using their adaptive EQ that I mentioned earlier, but this only made the sound quality worse. So I don't recommend using that with these headphones phones. So let's go ahead and break down the sound. So first let's start with that bass. Now the Soundpeat Space have strong and punchy bass response. There's decent sub bass rumble here as well. It's surprisingly versatile and it responds to EQ very well. So you can increase it or you can turn it down based on your own personal taste. These can dig really deep on tracks like I Get the Bag by Gucci Mane where you can really feel that sub bass running through the entire track. You definitely got to give that a shot. Now, as far as the mid range goes, the mid range here is laid back out of the box. So I bumped it up a bit to open things up. There is a noticeable mid bass presence here, but it isn't horrible if you like bass in your music. Fun fact, I like bass in my music. Shout out to the bass head crew. Good vocal performance for both male and female voices after my EQ adjustment. Instruments and live vocals have a warm feel to them. Listening to Die For You by The Weeknd is a must if you want to hear what I'm experiencing. Now, moving over to the treble. As I mentioned earlier, out of the box, the treble wasn't bright enough for my own personal taste. So after EQ adjustment, the treble comes in nice and crisp without being harsh or sibilant. You also get some decent stereo separation and even, even a hint of soundstage with the right songs. Now, listening to Take Me Out by Franz Ferdinand can help you hear exactly what I'm referring to here. Now, last but not least, let's talk about how they sound via the 3.5 millimeter aux cable. So when testing them this way, the Soundpeat space will power down as soon as you plug that aux cable in. So there's no DSP or custom EQ active when they're being used in this passive mode. So the sound is 100% driver tuning. I'd say the sound is acceptable, but lackluster. So DSP and EQ truly work wonders for wireless headphones and the Soundpeat space are no exception to that rule. 
trouble. The mids and treble are very recessed. The music isn't really enjoyable this way. In my personal opinion, this is decent enough for like videos or, or gaming even, but music listening just really didn't do it for me. However, I still like that this option is here so you can use these passively after the battery has gone dead or with products that don't offer a Bluetooth connection. It offers versatility that I really think we should keep. I, I don't like when I get a set of wireless headphones that don't have a headphone jack. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, before we go any further into this video, I just realized while I was editing that I forgot to leave Soundpeats any sort of constructive criticism on the Soundpeats space. So firstly, the, the first thing I want to address with them is the volume. So while they do get loud enough for me, I think for some people, these may not get quite loud enough. So not to say that these headphones are quiet by any means, but I know people want their ears completely blown out with their headphones. So I'm just throwing this out there. If you're one of those people that need to have your headphones like super duper loud, these might not be enough for you. And then secondly, uh, in the transparency mode, one of the things that I noticed when I was outdoors taking my walks is wind noise is problematic. So they don't have a wind noise reduction mode like you might find on some other higher end headphones. So something to keep in mind, if you're gonna be taking walks outdoors in the wind, transparency mode, it can get a little annoying. If you turn on noise cancellation, it'll be pretty much gone. Um, same thing in normal mode, but I just wanted to throw those two things out there to make sure that Soundbeats heard this constructive criticism. So now let's jump into some quick mic tests. I'll also be including some competitors that are also under 100 bucks from Soundcore, One More, and Tozo. All right, so here we have the microphone quality test for the Soundpeats space. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, and here we have the microphone test for the Tozo HT2. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing. One, two, three. All right, and here we have the microphone check for the one more sauna flow. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, and here we have the microphone test for the Soundcore Space One. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the sound piece space in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or something along those lines. So, testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the Tozo HT2 in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or something along those lines. So, testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the one more sauna flow in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded bus station, or something along those lines. So, testing, testing. One, two, three. And here we have the Soundcore Space One in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or something along those lines. So testing, testing, one, two, three. Now, for full disclosure, the Soundpeats space were sent to me by Soundpeats for testing and review purposes. Despite this, they received no rights for copy or script approval and were not allowed to see this video prior to it being published. They are watching this video at the same time that you are. I'm telling you all of this because I believe in transparency and honesty with you as the viewer. As always, please be sure to watch multiple reviews before you make that final purchase decision. Soundpeats usually launches these products with discounts, so be sure to check the video description for any discounts while they are available. If you are interested in seeing my favorite earbuds under 100 bucks, check out the video that I'm going to leave for you right up here on the screen. With that said, my name is Hefe, and I'm out.